Before going any further, we're going to take a little bit of time and design or kind of plan out how everything is going to look and how we're going to handle updating our board. We said one of the features we'd like to have is undo and redo, and we also said we'd like to emphasize immutability, so we need to find some way to update this initial board. Of course, one thing we could do is just mutate the board, for example, we could update it by just updating a cell like this, however, that's going to make undo and redo extremely difficult to implement because there's no way to know the previous state. What we're going to do instead is instead of updating this board, we're going to create a new board every time something changes and push it into an array. So for example, I'm going to have an array of boards. At the start, it's just going to be something like this and that's going to work fine. And then when someone goes, you might have a new move like this. And then the next state would be something like this. So we're going to be able to keep track of all the states of the board. What we're then going to do is have a computed property which returns the last entry in this array and that's going to be the current game state. So let's go ahead and set that up and then write a test to make sure everything is working properly. The first thing we're going to do is import some reactivity from view. I'm going to go ahead and grab both ref and computed because we're going to be using both of those. And this is going to be a design decision I'm going to make and I'm going to explain some of the downsides of using ref and computed in just a moment here. Before we do that, however, I'm going to create a new variable called boards, and that's just going to be an array initialized with the initial board at first. I'm actually going to make this a reactive ref, so I'm going to pass that into a ref like this. The next thing we're going to do is return this. I'm going to return boards, and I'd like this to be read only. I don't want people to mutate this from the outside. Instead, the way I'm going to update the board is by creating a new function called make move or something like that. So what we're going to do is make this read only and then pass in the boards variable here. To make it read only, I'm going to have to import read only from view as well. This is definitely a good start, but we still don't know the current game state. We only know that the initial state is going to be this one up here. We're going to eventually have more states in here. So what we're going to do is have another, another entry in here, and that one's going to be called current board. And this one is going to be a computed property, and that's going to grab the last entry in the boards array. So I'm just going to make this one computed, and then we're just going to say boards.value, and then grab the very last one. So it's going to be boards dot value dot length minus one. And that's going to give us the last entry. This doesn't, it, we have to make sure this works. So we're going to write a test for this very soon. In fact, we're going to write a test for this one right now. So what I'm going to do firstly is run my tests in watch mode just to get a nice quick feedback loop. Now we're going to head over to our test file and start writing some tests. We already have one called example.spec.js. I'm going to grab that and we're just going to repurpose this one. So I'm going to delete all of this content and save it off. And my test is going to run automatically. The watch mode is working. Let's go ahead and start off with just a regular test here and I'm just going to call this one current board for now to see if everything is working. The next thing we need to do is import our board so I'm going to grab my use tic-tac-toe and that one's going to come from I believe two levels up inside of source.game.js. Let's go ahead and see if we've got the correct import there by creating a new game. We're interested in current board and that's going to come from use tic-tac-toe. There is going to be a problem declaring these global reactive variables. We're going to see that uh, not very uh, in the near future, so I'm not going to go straight into it right now. Rather, I'm going to let that problem emerge and see what happens when we get there. Just to make sure this is working, I'm going to do a console log, and I expect to have something in here. Uh, we're getting that computed value, which is what we expected. What we really want here is the value, so I'm going to go ahead and do a console log on the value, and that should be that initial board array. And if everything's working correctly, we are getting that initial boards array. So let's go ahead and write a test in here. We're going to expect that that value here, so the current board dot value, and that is going to be equal to that initial board array. So what I'm going to do is just type that in manually just to make sure everything is working. In fact, I'm just going to jump up here and copy that one over for now. Let's save it off and see what happens. With a bit of luck, this is going to pass and that should be a good place to leave this lecture at and I'll see you in the next lecture.